In this video, we're going to look at how to do pH calculations for weak acids and weak bases. Now, as you might recall in the last video, I mentioned that pH calculations for strong acids and strong bases, it's much easier than that for weak acids and weak bases. The reason why is because weak acids do not dissociate completely. They only partially dissociate. So you cannot assume that the weak acid concentration is equal to the hydronium ion concentration. So that gives you an extra task to complete. You first need to figure out what is the hydrogen ion concentration, and then you can use that value to do the pH calculation. So the way to do this is weak acids dissociate to different degrees depending on the identity of the weak acids. Some weak acids are stronger, some weak acids are weaker. So to do the calculation, the MCAT must give you the Ka or the pKa value. And we'll do this using an ice table, which we'll demonstrate with this example right here. So here, the question is, what is the pH of a five times 10 to the negative three molar acetic acid solution? And here, you're told that the Ka of acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative five. So the way that the ice table works is you wanna start first by writing out the expression for the dissociation of this acid. So that's going to be CH3COOH dissociates to form CH3COO minus and H plus. And here we're going to form an ice table. So we're going to have I, which stands for initial, C, which stands for change and E, which stands for equilibrium. And then we're gonna go ahead and fill in the table with these different values. So initially, none of the acetic acid has dissociated. So the concentration of acetic acid is just whatever concentration was added to solution. So we can say this is just equal to CH3COOH. However, we do know that some of the acetic acid is going to dissociate in solution. So we don't know the amount, so we're just going to call it X. X amount of acetic acid dissociates, and if X dissociates, then we're going to get X amount of acetate and X amount of the hydrogen ion. So at equilibrium, after the dissociation has occurred, the acetic acid concentration will be equal to the initial concentration minus X, and the concentrations of the acetate and the hydrogen ion will both be equal to X. Now, the reason why we went to this hassle of drawing out this ice table is because the ice table is going to allow us to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration. And we can do this with Ka, the acid dissociation constant. So Ka is just the equilibrium constant for this dissociation reaction. So it's equal to acetate concentration times H plus over the acetic acid concentration, CH3COOH. Here, we do have the different quantities, right? At equilibrium, the acetate and hydrogen ion concentrations are X, and the acetic acid concentration is its initial concentration minus x. So we can fill that in to get Ka is equal to x times x divided by the acetic acid concentration minus x. Now here, there's a step that you can take to simplify the calculations, which you actually need to on the MCAT since again, you don't have a calculator. So the assumption here is weak acids don't dissociate very much. So the concentration of the initial weak acid is much larger than the amount that dissociates. The acetic acid concentration much larger than X. So since the amount of the acetic acid that dissociates is very little, that means that CH3COH minus X is just approximately equal to CH3COOH. So we can use that to replace this, which will simplify our calculations. So we have Ka is equal to X squared over CH3COOH. 
What we can do with this now is we can rearrange, we can multiply by CH3COH. So we get Ka times CH3COOH equals X squared. We can then take the square root of both sides. So we get X is equal to the square root of Ka times the concentration of the acetic acid. Now, the reason why we're trying to isolate for X is because X is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen ion. So this is equal to H plus. So essentially, if we calculate this value, we can just take negative log of this value to get the pH. So let's go ahead and do that. We know that Ka was given to us as 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And the concentration of the acetic acid was given as 5 times 10 to the negative 3. That gives us a value of 1.8 times 5 is 9. 10 to the negative 5 times 10 to the negative 3 is 10 to the negative 8. And here we actually have some nice numbers because the square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of 10 to the negative 8 is 10 to the negative 4. So this gives us x as 3 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. And again, this is the concentration of H+. Plus. So finally, we can use this to calculate the pH. The pH is equal to the negative log of the H plus concentration, which is equal to negative log of 3 times 10 to the negative 4. If you recall our shortcut, we say that 3 times 10 to the negative 4 is between 1 times 10 to the negative 4 and 10 times 10 to the negative 4. 10 times 10 to the negative 4 is also 10 to the negative 3. So this would tell us that the pH of our solution is between 3 and 4. So this is how you do the pH calculation of a weak acid using the ice table. Now, one thing you might have noticed is this took a lot of time. This is a lot of work to do. All right, and another thing you might realize is that this ice table is the same for every single weak acid. So for all these calculations, you would follow the same exact step. So as it turns out, there's actually this solution that you can use for every single weak acid or weak base calculation. So here I have the equations for you that you can use if you don't want to go through all the ice steps, which is pH is equal to the negative log of the square root of the Ka times the weak acid concentration. So this is how you would do the calculation of a weak acid. It's the same result that we got from the ice table, but again, like I said, you always get this same exact result when you're doing the pH calculations of weak acids in solution. Now, in this case, we're not going to show weak bases, but weak bases are essentially the same thing, except again, instead of being given, being able to calculate pH, you would calculate pOH. So you would have pOH is equal to the negative log of the square root of Kb times the weak base concentration. So it works the same way, except it's the base instead of an acid.